This is you, and this is a significant other in your life. And this significant other keeps on cheating on you every single night. And they come to you and they say, I'm sorry. They agree that it's wrong. They show feelings of remorse. But then the next night, they go off and they do the very same thing once again. And after that, they come to you and say sorry, and it is the same pattern. You can assess that situation and say, this person is not truly sorry. Even though they confess with their lips they are sorry, they are not because they're not even trying to fight this temptation. They're not even trying to get out of this. Now, if you have a significant other who is dealing with a pornography addiction, and they come to you and they apologize and they say, I agree that it's wrong. This is this is um, something that I'm struggling with and I'm asking for your prayers and your help. And you can see that over time, there is a change. There is a lessening of this, um, of them watching pornography. And there is uh, eventually an overcoming of it. You can see that they're fighting even though maybe they fall a few times. So... The Bible tells us that a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up, but the wicked fall by their calamity. Okay, so just because, and that's Proverbs 26, 14, just because you are falling seven times and getting back up, maybe it's an addiction to alcohol. Maybe it's an addiction to weed. Maybe it's an addiction to porn. Maybe it's anger outburst. Maybe it's envy. Maybe it's lying. Just because you're falling, the Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up. That doesn't mean that you're not righteous because you're righteous by the blood of Jesus. The point is that you're getting back up. That is the point. You are trying with the Lord. And if you've been trying for a long time, you see no results maybe assess and look and say, maybe I'm doing this in the flesh. Maybe I'm trying, but I'm not trying with God because the Bible says with God, all things are possible. And Jesus said, unless you abide in me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. Read John 15. It's all about abiding in Jesus. When you are doing it with God, and I, and I implore you, if you've been trying so hard and you haven't really done it with God, get up again and do it with God. Because with God, you will overcome this. Jesus, by the power of his blood and his name, he helped me overcome addictions, drug addiction, uh, uh, masturbation, and uh, lust. Uh, he helped me overcome so many things. Uh, anger issues, not honoring my mom and dad, being a horrible daughter throughout my childhood. And he changed me. Okay, when we hang out with our creator, he knows us and he knows how to change us. He created us, he can change us. So you are who you hang out with. And if you hang out with Jesus, you're going to be more like him. You're going to get his power to change. Okay, doing it with God means abiding in him, <laughs> spending time with him, reading the word, applying it to your life eating it up, digesting it. You know, you can, God, God doesn't want you to just read the word. He wants you to study the word. Okay. He wants you to eat the word, eat that scroll, let it change and transform you. Let it renew your mind. Let, let, let it fill your mind with the truth. So when the lies come, because you're, you're fighting a, a battle against an unseen enemy who, whose nickname is the father of lies, and the lies come to your mind, the mind is a battlefield. So you need to fill your mind with the truth. Right. Because immediately when, when you're when you're studying about, you know, the truth and, and how many how many how much fake news there is when when you study that and you know all about like how there's fake news and blah, blah, blah and you inform yourself. Guess what? When you see something uh, that's fake on the news, you immediately recognize that you say that's fake news. Why? Because you've filled your mind with the truth, fill your mind with the truth. And when that lie comes about you or about your marriage or about everything that's going to happen in your future and blah, blah, blah you're calling your worth, your worth, you're going to say no, because this is what it says right here to counteract it. Sorry, I went on a little tangent, but you need to abide in Jesus and spending time with him. You're abiding in the vine. You're gaining the power over sin. Okay. And so get up and do it again with, with, with Jesus.
don't know, I just bit my tongue. Um, okay, so uh, what was I going to say? Okay, so just, yeah, so just, and a lot of times, and I've said this before, a lot of times we are surprised by our sin. We're like, oh my gosh, I just sinned. I sinned against the Lord. He hates me. He's never going to forgive me. Don't believe that lie of hell. The Bible says that godly sorrow produces repentance. The conviction of the Holy Spirit produces repentance. Yes, it's a good thing to, to know that you've grieved the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible says. We can grieve him, right? Uh, and, and so you grieve with the Holy Spirit and say, I'm so sorry for that. And you say, Lord, help me change. And you take the parameters and the actions you need to do to work with God to not do that anymore. Close the doors to the, to the enemy, right? Uh, do your part, right? But don't believe the lie of hell that, you know, God, God is like, oh my gosh, you know, shocked by your, your sin. And he's like, so mad at you. Well, no, there is a difference between falling into a sin, which we do every day and practicing a sin. And when we're practicing a sin, we need to have the fear of the Lord to depart from evil, right? So, uh, and I'm just going to explain what the difference is between practicing a sin where you really need to get into repentance. And obviously we should repent every day, come before the Lord. I'm sorry that I did this, da, 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 da. Um, because, you know, that's the right thing to do. And that's, you know, you should have sorrow over your sin because when you have the Holy Spirit, you delight in his law. You delight, your, your, your desires are completely changed and you want to do God's will. You want to do his law. You delight in his law. And you hate sin. Very different from before Jesus when you were just doing whatever and enjoying it. Uh, so people say, you know, and they take things out of context in the Bible. And they say, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. They take that verse and they say, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, if they call and they and they do the sinner's prayer and they come before the altar. And, you know, they say, I believe and I and I and I accept Lord, uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in my heart. Uh, I'm saved. And then they go on sinning. That is w one of the biggest lies that the devil tells people. And it's bringing self-proclaimed Christians, Christians in name only to hell. And it's so sad. They believe they're going to heaven because they believe this false doctrine. Jesus, when he started his ministry, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In the book of Acts, okay, he, uh, the, we read in the book of Acts, that all these people that even crucified Jesus, they're with Peter and whatever, and they're seeing all these miracles. Um, and they say, what do we do? We know that we just crucified Jesus. What do we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. So um, we need to have repentance as a lifestyle. Um, so a lot of people say, what, well, if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Yes, and if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Yes, but if you have true belief in your heart, because true belief produces repentance, the fruit of repentance, naturally repentance, it's not a work. It's, it produces repentance. It produces a change in your desires. It produces a change in who you are and your lifestyle. Repentance comes from the Greek word metanoia. Metanoia means a change of mind, yes, but it's also a change in lifestyle. When you really change your mind, when you really have remorse, true remorse, okay, not just the feeling. When it's true, you don't you don't keep going like this without trying, without without the fear of losing that person, right? Without the fear of the Lord, you, you're you're not just you're you're fighting with God to overcome this, and you know that you need to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, right? We're not saved by following the commandments, but um, Jesus uh, teaches the commandments. He said, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And anyone who teaches men not to follow the, the commandments will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. He said, uh, if anyone says, I know him and does not do what he says, or other translations, and does not follow his commandments, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. So um, the commandments is, it's not, it's not, you're not saved by the commandments, but you are saved by true faith that produces 
they delight in the commandments and it produces an obedience to the commandments naturally. Um, and it frees you from the bondage of sin, right? Because anyone who sins is a slave to it with a lie, it's a pile and lie, 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 and so on. So, uh, yeah, so true, true belief. Yes, you will be saved, true belief, right? But you cannot just say the sinner's prayer and then go on sinning. The Bible says, should we uh, abide or should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, right? And in Jude chapter one, it talks about how these men, these teachers have crept in unawares, and they uh, turn the they pervert the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness, which is a license to sin. Uh, so they're just they they just see God as a God of love and and grace, and yes, He is all those things. But the Bible also says it is a very fearful thing to fall into the into the hands of the Almighty God, and it is the fear of the Lord that helps a man depart from evil. In my backsliding state, when God had delivered me from all these drugs and all these things, and I went back. It was the fear of the Lord that got me out of there. Because if I if I if I thought, you know what, I'm I'm groovy, I'm good. I would have never left. I would have never left. I would have let my my flesh have its way. And so there's a lot of people that are self-proclaimed Christians, Christians in name only, uh, that are gonna go to hell because of this this lie. And uh, here is uh, James, two eighteen to twenty three. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. I'll show you my faith by my works. My, my faith will naturally produce works and you're going to see it. You believe that God is one, you do well. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. So with a self-proclaimed Christian, and a demon what's this what's the similarity between them well they they both believe that jesus christ is lord they don't love him demons don't love him and they don't reverence him they do reverence him as lord because they bow down to him they submit to him they have to but they don't honor him as lord they don't love him as lord and they don't naturally want to obey him right um so here right what we're seeing is and they don't obey the lord right to some degree right they they they, they repented or i'm sorry they rebelled from god and then they were cast down and became demons anyways the point is both the christian the self-proclaimed christian and the demon believe in jesus that he is lord they both know he's lord they both believe the gospel is true Yes, uh, but the demon is actually more respectful towards God because they actually tremble at him. They tremble at his name, at his presence. And this self-proclaimed Christian is just doesn't have any fear of the Lord, does not tremble at his word. It's just going around and sinning and doing whatever and taking advantage of God's grace. But they both don't obey the Lord. And so... Uh, you know, and it keeps going. And, and, and this is such an amazing chapter right here. It says, do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on, his, on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works faith was completed by his works and the scripture was fulfilled that says abraham believed god and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of god so uh you know psalm 145 18 the lord is close near to them that call upon him all that call upon him in truth, right? Uh, because there's people, right? They call upon the Lord, but not in truth. Matthew uh, 15, 8, it says, uh, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. 
Now, here we read a story of these self-proclaimed Christians that are going to hell. Now listen to this. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? Did we not cast out demons in thy name and do many mighty works in thy name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So these people believed in Jesus. They worked miracles in his name, right? And they claimed to be his followers in the earthly life. Uh, but Jesus cast them away into outer darkness. Why? He said, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. You, and other translations, you, you who practice lawlessness. So when we're practicing lawlessness, when we're living a lifestyle of sin, whether it's judgment, whatever, whatever it is, judgment, criticism of people, gossip, whatever, to pornography, um, and we're not repenting and we don't see any wrong in it, we think that, oh, just because I'm doing all these other good things, I'm going to go to heaven. It's wrong. So we need to believe in Jesus and truly believe in him and what he says and have our actions uh, follow up with that. Um, so we cannot take advantage of God's grace, but know that if you are just trying your best and you keep falling, but you keep getting back up, know that the Lord sees your efforts. He loves you and you will overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. And he will help you break those chains of sin. You just keep fighting with him and you will be free because whom the Son sets free is free indeed.